Numerical Computation Chapter 2 Additional Video Number 2 This video could be viewed after you have seen the video on Newton's Divided Difference Video Chapter 2.5 In this video we present the Atkin-Neville interpolation. This is a rather elegant approach to polynomial interpolation. The idea it uses is rather similar to that of Newton's divided differences. As you will see soon, the method uses a recursive algorithm, just as Newton's divided difference. The algorithm is useful in evaluating the interpolating polynomial. So we start with a given set of data points xk, yk, k from 0, 1 to n with n plus 1 point under the assumption that all the xk's are distinct. Now let p i j of x, where the index i is less than j, so let that be a polynomial of degree j minus i, and that polynomial should interpolate the data points x, k, y, k for all the k's lie between i and j. And to compute these uh, polynomials p, i, j's, one can use recursion as follows. So when i equals j, we have a polynomial of degree 0, which is constant, and it simply takes the value y, i. So we have um, m plus 1 of such polynomials. And then for i different from j, so if i is less than j by a bigger number, which means this interpolates more points, then we'll have a higher order polynomial. So we go through a recursion, that is, this polynomial is represented by the two polynomials at a previous level that contains one point less. So this polynomial pi with j minus 1 will have one point less to interpolate than this polynomial, exactly the point at j, while this polynomial will not interpolate the point at xi, which this polynomial does. And if those earlier level polynomials are already computed, then one can simply do this combination to get a polynomial of one degree higher and interpolates one more point than both of these. So um, we call the initializing point equation one and the recursive formula we label it as equation number two. And here actually there are many many layers, many, many equations. So this holds for every i less than j and they range from 0 to n. Then we need to show that these polynomials actually do perform the interpolating property. So formula 1 is rather trivial, it's constant, so it's immediate. But for formula 2, we need to prove it. And the proof can be done by induction. Okay, so let's say for given i and j, where i is less than j, I assume that I have a polynomial p i j minus 1 already obtained, that it interpolates through all the points with indices k from i all the way to j minus 1. And then, also, I assume I have another polynomial, 
pi plus 1j that actually interpolates all the points with index for k from i plus 1 to j, just between those two indices. So that is the um, induction hypothesis. And what does it mean? Well, that means for this polynomial here, if I put in the value xk for all the points k from 1 to j minus 1, it returns to me the yk value. And while for this polynomial, if I plug in xk, k range from i minus 1 to j, it returns to me the yk value. And then we need to prove that the polynomial Pij formed by formula 2 actually interpolates more points. So um, let's look at it. First, we look at all the um, so-called inner points. These are the points for k from i plus 1 to j minus 1 where the two boundary point i, j will be considered separately later. So for the k-index like this, then I can evaluate the polynomial p, i, j at x, k. So that's the expression and where the two polynomials at the previous level, p, i, j minus 1 and p, i plus 1, j, will be evaluated at x k and then there we know that this one will equal y k because of the induction step assumption and this one here also equals y k because of the induction step and then let's stare at this expression what do we have here y k is common I can take out and then what I have is an x k minus x k cancels each other what do we have on the numerator would be xi now carries a positive sign minus xj, which is exactly the same as the denominator. So in the end, we get yk. So we have proved that this new polynomial would interpolate the data at all the um, kind of the inner points. Now it remains to verify the two boundary points. What will be the value pij evaluated at xi? Well, if we plug in x equals xi in the formula 2, and we see that we only get the first term out of it, and then you plug xi in for pij minus 1, this gives you yi. And this term here cancels that term, and you get yi. And now, one plugs xj into the formula, 2, and then we see the first term is 0, and it's gone. We only have the second term. And then this is exactly the negative of that, so that will give me 1. And pi plus 1j evaluated xj by my induction step assumption, that simply equals yj. And therefore, we conclude now pij interpolates all the points with indices k from i all the way through j, and which completes the induction step. And then we can conclude that Pij for any ij will interpolate all the points with index from i to j. The polynomials Pij can now be arranged in a triangular form in a matrix, either a lower triangular form or an upper triangular form, similar to what we did to Newton's divided difference algorithm. Let's go through an example. Let's say we have a given data set. xk is just four points that are distinct, so we put in increasing order, and yk takes some values. 
and following the formula 1 and 2, we can generate the data which is represented here in a lower triangular form in a matrix. One can arrange the first column as xk, the second column as yk, which is also the polynomials p i i for i ranging from 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then you can compute the p of uh, 0, 1, put it here, p of 1, 2, put it here, p of 2, 3, put it here, based on the information from the previous step. And then you can use this polynomial and this polynomial here to compute this one, that will be p02, and then with this and that, you can compute this, which is p13. And then use those two, you can compute the final one, that will be p03, just by formula 2. And we did the computation and we um, expanded into the simple form. And you can conclude that this will be the polynomial that interpolate the data points from x0 all the way to x3. Here will be 0, 1, 2, 3. So as expected, we see that generating this tabular by hand is a rather um, labor-intensive work. The algorithm, however, can be nicely implemented, say, in MATLAB with the program code. It is also worthwhile to notice that the derivatives of this polynomial Pij also satisfy a very similar recursive relation. We know if i equal j, that's just constant, so that will be zero, the derivative of the lowest order. And then if you differentiate the expression 2 one more time in x, you will get this recursive relation for the derivatives of all these polynomials. And then here there are actually many, many layers. Okay, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it.